You're a four-year-old watching Coco Melon on your mum's iPad. But what if I told you you could be a millionaire by the humble age of 12? Would you take it? Even if it meant devoting your childhood to a 9-to-5 work regime? I personally wouldn't. I mean, do you know how difficult it is to uphold a million dollar empire as an adult, let alone a kid? Well, today we'll be diving deeper beyond the curtain of what makes Ryan's world so popular in the first place. As well as addressing how the future could look for Ryan. I mean, no offense, but when I was four years old, all I was doing was playing Toka Boka on my iPad. I definitely couldn't make a decision if my life depended on it. And the fact I find fascinating is he's about to dive into his teens and he's still making children's content. It's fine to make children's content family friendly content and it's fine to make toy reviews at that age but the thing is do they want to do it? Is it for his own joy or is it a nice business venture for his parents? Well we're about to find out. I just want to clarify this video is not for milking purposes. It is literally because I am worried about Ryan because in a recent Colin and Submit interview I literally saw eye bags under his eyes. He looked like someone who had been doing shift work, who'd been working all the time, like a workaholic. Like, you don't just form sleep bags. Like, if you get one night without sleep, sure, you get a few sleep bags, but they're not that bad. But if you go one to two weeks without sleep, you can't survive. That's probably why the video felt like a bit toned down. I kind of feel like every single, most family channels, not everyone, kind of hiding something or another. Like, the royalty family, Ferran is basically dislocated from his dad and his dad was the good person but we don't know that yet so i'm not going to clarify that information but there's a lot of proof of truth crying but going on to ryan's toys reviews his mom's in prison it's literally all online she probably learned her ways and she's a really good person now but we don't really know a person people can portray slash show us who we want them to believe them to be as good people and in that interview the parents felt more avoidant of ryan for example every time ryan was supposed like saying one thing or another he'd look back at his parents as if they scripted this entire thing and it's not really a moment when ryan is a mate away from his parents i'm with my parents a lot but i don't go on national interviews with them because that would be a breach of privacy you see a lot of celebrities don't show their children for this specific reason because in all seriousness when you're this young it can be really overwhelming really overwhelming being that big as tommy Innett said in the interview i'm not judging the parenting a better option is to let them choose their own path in life because if they're just being forced into this one gateway of making videos because they don't have control over the camera they don't ha know how to function technology that's just the stereotypical facts about being that young unless you're a super genius etc like the casting in young children i guess it's constructive don't go and hate on the channel because this is not what the video is for it's just an outlook on where the lines draw in family channels it's just an educational video yeah anything that's what i'm trying to say but when looking at youtubers such as dan tdm hiding his son's face for the sole purpose of him choosing his own path in life and dan tdm's fame and success not getting in the way of asher's dreams nowadays i feel like ryan's channel anything he does is scripted like there's nothing wrong with scripted the first intro part sector of my video is scripted i'm not gonna lie to you you peeps but i don't take it as a business because that's not what youtube's supposed to be youtube's supposed to be a platform where you can express your genuine passion for the content you're creating and make people aware about topics of course all these drama channels trying to take other channels down because I'm not going to do videos on Langhi blocks, etc. Because I'm not passionate about them. And they just scream all the time, to be honest. Now, let's look at the future for Ryan's toy reviews. I mean, it's pretty obvious now he's about to go into a teenager hood. And like Miles Morales, the probability of him doing his own thing is very high. And in this case, the protagonist of the Spider-Verse are them. If that makes sense, the villains of the Spider-Verse. <sighs> Never mind. By passion for the content you're creating. I do art. I'm heavily passionate into art. By the way, I'm holding this so still because someone actually said, if you don't, there's basically tons of plosives, etc. And I'm probably gonna redecorate the background soon with tons of paint. So these are less boring and more engaging. Ryan genuinely looks quiet and scared nowadays. Like he can't speak up on how he's really feeling. Like his family has to be there at every waking moment. 
I mean, definitely when I was about to turn 13. Maybe different for Ryan. Sorry, earwax. I didn't really hang around with friends, but I wanted to do stuff I was passionate about, like animating, drawing, YouTube videos, editing. But maybe he doesn't always want to make YouTube videos. Maybe he wants to have time for his passions. And they said on like interview i've mentioned this so many times oh my god stop mentioning it that he basically has time to do whatever he wants but on the weekends when he's not at school doesn't he just want to relax from not making videos sleepless nights how would they get 20 videos out a week by him doing one hour and a half of work no they're definitely overworking this kid i bet you like eight hours plus because it's actually illegal to overwork people but i mean i guess they have to get the bread only his parents though i mean He's 13, so he must get some of it to spend. But at that point, you don't really know about finances, tax, etc. But I'm actually terrified for Ryan because I don't want it to end up like one of those situations where he's left with nothing in the future and he has to build up his career from the ground up. And all he's known as is the person who used to review toys and became very popular, amassing billions of views. And with all this going on right now, it may just be another MatPat scenario where he has to retire, pursue his own passions, quit YouTube, and leave his parents starstruck, even though they have several other businesses helping other creators, etc. Which is cool and all, but needing Ryan for every video, it's gotta be so much effort. And you're saying all of his videos can become animated. What about the animators? This is what I think. Are these people getting paid enough? That's what I'm thinking. If they're taking this much money home, don't they get promotions, etc.? Because it's not really looked over. Because I don't know about you, but if this monkey got underpaid, I definitely wouldn't be happy. He'd be really sad. Who knows, maybe he wants to have sleep with his friends. Something else to YouTube. I mean, YouTube is cool and all. I love doing YouTube, but I can't do it every single day, all the time. You have to take breaks in between YouTube, or that's the professional way to get burnt out. You can't do all this over editing, etc., every day. So just be consistent. Enjoy what you do, speak from the heart, the heart, and I think you'll make a great career. You can make a career on YouTube, anyone can. Just don't uh, try not to go into that family channel stuff. Keep your kids private off the internet, if you know what's best for you. But even if you don't, you know, they're going to have tons of stalkers and doxers, and the future may have different plans for them. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'm not gonna milk it and do 10 minutes, etc. because this is all I really have packed. I don't really have anything planned, except from the script at the start. See you in the next one. Bye.